I'm going to start doing something a little bit different. I know we've got a lot of people that listen to the podcast, but some people don't. So I figured, let me give you another way to listen to the education that we're delivering here on Private Club Radio each and every week. So I'm going to start trying as much as possible to videotape some of these episodes. It'll give you a little sneak peek behind the show, and hopefully we'll have a little bit of fun. So this week we're going to be talking about the top three lessons that I learned in Education City, Qatar. And I think you're going to enjoy it. Stay tuned. Here we go. Show's about to start. Welcome to Private Club Radio, your weekly source for industry education, news, and discussion. Broadcasting from Tampa, Florida, ladies and gentlemen, here is your host, Gabriel Aloisi. Hey, good to be with you here on Private Club Radio. This is episode 212 of the show. Thanks to all of you who have watched or listened to all 212 of these. I know there's a few of you out there, and I want to say thank you. This week, we're going to talk about my little adventure to the country of Qatar. And if you have not, I would invite you to check out my YouTube channel, Let's Play Through, to watch what happened over there. I got invited by Mr. Michael Braidwood, who, if you're a listener of this show, you might have heard way, way, way back in the day, Michael was on this show with the Club Managers Association of Europe. He was the director of education for some time over there. And he has since moved on to a management position in Qatar at Education City Golf Club. And so I went over there to speak to the CMAE, to their local chapter there, and I got to experience Education City and shoot an episode of Let's Play Through there. If you haven't seen last week's episode, by the way, so much fun. First off, we went into the souk, which is the traditional outdoor market there in Doha. Doha is the capital of Qatar. And just the sights and smells and sounds of that place were really second to none. And I'll I'll specifically talk about the smell. I wish that could come across on, it doesn't come across on a video. But believe it or not, I went in with, with some expectations. I expected being out in the desert, it's hot, it's going to be very sweaty. It's probably not going to smell very good. I couldn't have been further from the truth. Qatar is the best smelling place I've ever been to, believe it or not. There's just this sweet smell that permeates the desert. And then they've got all sorts of incense burning and all sorts of um, florals and spices kind of coming together in the streets there. And it's it's absolutely one of a kind. There's no other way for me to put it. It smells great. So that was the out the outdoor market. Uh, and we got to see some traditional uh, cooking techniques. We got to see some spices, some very special spices. We got to see falcons. They have falcons for pets in Qatar. Little boys, uh, when, they're, when they're young, have a pet falcon and they raise these things. They live with them 24-7. It's, it's pretty wild. Then we got to play Education City Golf Club, which is a fascinating uh, Jose Maria Olathabal design. 150 bunkers on the course, just beautiful, immaculate condition. It hasn't even officially opened. It'll officially open in March, but it's been open, kind of a soft opening for about a year now. Just a beautiful spot. Not only do they have an 18-hole course, they also have a six-hole course, by the way, which I love because if you're a young executive, you don't have a lot of time, what a great way to just go out and spend an hour or maybe even 45 minutes and play a little round and be done. Love that idea. I'd love to see more courses do that. Uh, and it's a full-on course. It's not like it's a little par three. It's a, it's a full six holes. They do have a, a flood-lit par three course, though. So, you know, obviously it's hot in the desert, especially in the summertime. And you can go out and play golf at night under the lights, which is beautiful. That's a par three course. Then they've actually got a foot golf course. So I actually, you'll see me in the show kicking a soccer ball with my new friend, Mohammed Al Naimi, who is the deputy general manager there at Education City. And they've got just an incredible practice facility. Then they've got something called the Center of Excellence, which to me is probably the most impressive training facility that I've ever come across. They have every piece of technology you can imagine. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a second. And then after the golf portion of the show, we go out into the desert 
and we ride some camels. We hit some shots out in the sand dunes. There's some some really interesting visuals. So that that's episode one, part one that we just released on January 15th. Next next uh, episode from Education City. There's a lot more going on. We're going to learn about the World Cup bid from Qatar and all the infrastructure changes that are happening in that country. We are going to uh, do a little bit more night golf at Education City. And then we're also going to go to Al Shakab, which, if you're into horses, is one of the most incredible horse training and breeding facilities in the world. They train these Persian horses. And let me tell you, I would not be overstating it if I were to say that the horses are treated better than than some of uh, the humans at El Shakab. They've got uh, pools. I actually saw a horse swimming in a lap pool. They've got uh, treadmills for these horses. They've got spas. They've got all sorts of uh, massages and, and grooming these horses get. It. <laughs> it's wild. So a lot more coming in part two. But on what I wanted to do here on Private Club Radio was give you some takeaways that I learned at Education City Golf Club. And that place has just become a very special place to me after seeing it and after really um, being there for a week straight in Qatar, learning about the culture, getting to know the people and the staff, and getting to know Mike Braidwood a little bit more. They are doing some incredible things. And I just wanted to give you three lessons that I learned from Education City Golf Club in Qatar here on Private Club Radio. So we'll start off with the biggest lesson, lesson number one, I call capitalizing on culture. Now, Qatar at the moment, as you can imagine, is soccer crazy. They've got the World Cup coming in 2022. They're building eight new stadiums. In fact, one of those stadiums is being built basically adjacent to the Education City Golf property. They call it Education City Stadium. It's a 40,000 seat stadium. There's 9,000 workers working on that night and day around the clock to build that stadium to get it ready for the World Cup. And right now in the country, there's actually a million workers, foreign workers that have come to build these stadiums, to build roads and all the infrastructure surrounding it. But it's all has to do with soccer. They're soccer, soccer, soccer. You go out in the street and the kids are playing soccer. Their national team just won the Asian World Cup this year. And that was huge for them. So how do you capitalize on a country and its culture that is into soccer? What they did, as I mentioned before, is they built this six-hole foot golf course. And I thought that was just an incredible way to bridge the gap, right? So to take something that the local people are, are interested in and love and are passionate about find a way to put a little twist on that uh, for to get some more eyeballs on what you're doing. Because if you can imagine, these people in the desert, they hardly ever even see a green space. So just having a golf course is 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 wild. It's a, it's a foreign concept to them. In fact, you'll see people in the Middle East just like, you know, locals come, you know, to spend time and they just walk on the course because they, they have never seen green grass like that. But... Uh, by by creating this foot golf course, what they're doing is is they're showing the locals how to play golf. They're teaching them the rules. By playing foot golf, you learn, hey, you know, this is a par four. The person who is furthest away gets to shoot the ball first. You get to learn all sorts of lessons about the game in a way that you understand. So first of all, I think that that is an incredible lesson. How do you introduce the game of golf to people who are not necessarily interested in golf? So my challenge or my question to you is what can you do to tap into your community's unique culture? You might have a community that has a big wine culture. You might have a particular sports team in the area that people are crazy about. You might have a particular event that comes through every year. How can you bridge that gap in your own club? How can you create a cultural tie-in or an an amenity that might attract new eyeballs on your club? Whether that's golf or whether that's another amenity that you offer, what can you do at your club? That's lesson number one. Question number one, if you will, because in the end, these are a lot of questions I want to get you thinking. 
Lesson number two is innovation breeds excitement. As I told you, there is a lot of excitement in Doha and you feel the energy in that city because there's construction all around. There's something new happening. And all over the country and all over the world, golf clubs are putting in all sorts of capital improvements and they're building new courses. They're renovating existing courses, building clubhouses, adding on gyms and fitness facilities and pool decks and outdoor dining. Probably at your club, you've done some sort of capital expenditure or you're about to. That is the time to capitalize. That's the time to let everyone know in the local community what's happening at your club. And so many clubs forget to do that. They build all these wonderful things and then they don't let anyone know about it. So for instance, the center of excellence at Education City Golf Club, they have a track man range. So it's just a wonderful way to practice and learn every single distance of, uh, of every club in your bag. They've got a putting system that actually adjusts the slope, like literally the floor moves, and you can you can try to putt at different angles, and you learn how the ball will move at a different angle. Same thing on the on the uh, hitting bays. They've got driving indoor driving range bays that are air conditioned. Where you hit out into the driving range. And on those bays, you can actually adjust the slope or the lie. And you can learn how to hit shots from different, you know, with the ball below your feet, with the ball above your feet. Absolutely incredible. I got hooked up, as you'll see on the show, to a, a 3D system where I became a, an avatar on the screen. And I could they could completely analyze every part of my body. I was a little, uh, like a little three dimensional man on the screen and they analyzed my swing. I gained five yards just from some of the tweaks that their professional made in about 30 minutes after analyzing my swing, which was awesome. So for an existing member, for a new member, having that sort of technology that breeds excitement. So What are some of the innovations that you can add to your club's practice facility to separate yourself from the competition? What can you build that will bring people to your club during the off season? It still, it strikes me as uh, confounding that every club that's up in the North does not have some sort of indoor system at this point. Why don't you have a launch monitor inside? Why aren't don't you have hitting bays inside for the cold weather months? I, I don't get that. Same thing in Florida for the summer months. Why don't we have indoor golf facilities? Like I said, that's just perplexing to me. But what have you built or added recently that you can promote? What, what can you tell the local community about the exciting things happening at your club? And how can you do that in a captivating way via social media, via, via, via creating video content, Heck, by having a show like mine come to your club and and profile what you're doing. That's how you get more attention on it. The right capital expenditures will pay dividends for years to come. And I know this is a sticking point. I know you don't want to just build something uh, because you've got one board member who thinks that's a great idea. But what you do need to do is hire one of the professional firms in the industry. Get them to take a survey of the members. Get Get out into the local community and see what the trends are in your local community. And bring some of those ideas back into your club. That's what I would suggest. All right. So that's lesson number two. What can you build and how can you promote that to add excitement? I always think of Disney. Disney is the the company that does it the best. When they create a new ride or attraction, they promote look at the way they promote it. They they for for months and months and months leading up to that, they talk they start to leak different features and they start to show people using it or or simulations of it. And they do just a great job getting the excitement ready. And then when those rides open, they've got eight-hour waits because they've built that excitement. So if you're building something right now at your club, this is the time to start letting the world know. Okay, don't wait till it's already open. Start to build the excitement now. All right, lesson number three is to reduce friction points and create safe spaces. And here's what they did at Education City. They took a very unique approach in creating a safe space for their members and their guests. So for instance, for men in the men's locker room, uh, they have larger lockers. They've got like six foot high lockers. And here is why they do that. The men, the Qatari men wear something called a thobe, which is this long white garment that you've seen on the show, or you probably watch some television on the Middle East and you'll see the, the gentleman wearing these long white thobes. So, 
it would be a sticking point if you had a small locker where I've, I've got to fold that up and I've got to, you know, maybe it's wrinkled because they keep these things pristine, by the way. Um, they would not want them to be wrinkled or dirtied in any way. And by having a small, you know, standard size locker, that would happen. But with a big six foot locker, they can hang it neatly and they can dress and they can get, they can go out and have fun and not have to worry about their thoap. So they, re, they, they reduced a sticking point by doing that. For women, as you'll see in, in the show, many, many women in Qatar wear a full burqa, the full black, you know, co- covered from, from, from head to toe burqa. And when you're playing golf, that those clothes are obviously not conducive to learning the game of golf. So if you're trying to attract a new demographic into the game, you've got to release that sticking point for the women. And what they've done is they've created a walled off practice facility and hitting bays in their center of excellence with its own locker room specifically for the women there to be able to walk out and it's completely private and walled off. That gives them the opportunity to take off their burqas because they can expose themselves to other women to, but not to men. And then they can learn the game in a comfortable environment with female uh, lady professionals with uh, surrounded by other women. There's a, they have their own shipping green, their own putting green, their own bunkers. They have their own hitting bay, again, that goes out into the driving range, completely separate uh, and walled off so that they can feel comfortable. All right, so I know that... that if you're a club in the United States, you're probably thinking like, okay, well, how do, what does that have to do with us? We don't have those same issues. Well, you do. You've got, you've got sticking points. You've got things that you can do for your members to make it a more comfortable and inviting experience. If you do a private club right, it becomes the second home for your members, right? So what safe spaces or amenities can you create at your club so that members can feel like it is their second home? That might be, that might look like complimentary babysitting on Friday and Saturday night, just so parents can relax, know their kids are in a safe space and be able to enjoy the club. All right. That might look like a fast, casual dining option so that they don't have time as a, as a busy parent to maybe sit down or they don't, they worry about their kids being loud in the dining rooms, but you've got more of a Chipotle style, 